For those of you who have attended previous dinners, you will notice a change in this year's event. We do not have a noted headline and speaker. Why? Well, the answer is really twofold. First, the club has rededicated itself to expanding our educational outreach and was looking for a new way to highlight this mission. Second, let's be honest, the youth speakers in the last few years have stolen the show. So this year we're heading in a new direction and one which I personally hope will become our new tradition. Your keynote speaker this evening is in fact a student. Moreover, in addition to the opportunity to speak tonight, the club is providing a $10,000 scholarship to support his further academic pursuits. We conducted a national search, fielding over 100 interested students ranging in age from high school seniors to graduate students. And after extensive videos and Skype interviewing, we are pleased to have with us this evening Mr. Eric Lopez. Mr. Lopez is a sophomore studying aerospace engineering at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. His impressive list of awards and honors include serving as the National Director of Educational Outreach for Students for the Exploration and Development of Space, a worldwide organization of student space advocates, and being awarded first place in AIAA's National Undergraduate Team Space Design Competition. Tonight, I have no doubt that you will be as inspired by him as we were. Please help me welcome the future of the aerospace industry and tonight's keynote speaker, Mr. Eric Lopez. Thank you. If it's okay with everyone, I'd like to start off with a haiku. <laughs> Greatness was achieved, a legacy left behind. Who will carry on? That is my question to all of you. Who will carry on? As a generation that carried the torch of its predecessors onward to achieve great feats and technological marvels, is the next one ready to build on its success? Are the next generation of students ready to receive this burden on their shoulders and carry us into the unexplored? Whether or not they'll be ready will always be a source of great debate, but there is one thing I can say for certain. If for some reason they are not, the over 2,000 people in this room are in the best possible position to make a difference. After all, had not been through all your efforts, although indirect, I know the story of my life would be much different than the one that has elapsed. To fully understand, I invite you to take a trip back in time with me and meet nine-year-old Eric. <laughs> nine-year-old Eric was a kid like any other. He loved to run around and play tag, loved the occasional Disney movie, but most of all, I love to bother my older sister. But for a student who showed great promise at a young age, this was a very troubling time for him. He grew up in an underprivileged community in Los Angeles, one where he didn't have that many people to look up to. There's not much I remember about that little guy, but there is one fact that does remain. I repeated the third grade. <clears throat> How is it that I was able to go from failing the third grade to attending community college classes four years later? It's simple. I had direction. I had motivation. I was inspired. <clears throat> Where did it all begin? If I had to pinpoint it, I would say it dates back to a fourth grade field trip. My elementary school classroom was fortunate enough to take a tour of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. <laughs> now, as a kid, I had no idea what the Jet Propulsion Laboratory even meant. The only one I had ever heard of was Dexter's. 
All I knew is the teacher said something about robots, and plus, as a kid, everyone loves field trips. So I got on that big yellow bus, excited for my little chance to explore. As I walked through the Von Karman Auditorium, I was absolutely astounded by the spacecraft that surrounded me. But my most distinct memory from that field trip was looking at the Mars rover with awe. Little did I know that this experience would lay the foundation for my goals and aspirations. A seed was planted that day, but it has been my father who has helped nourish it. Throughout my life, my father has always told me, Eric, everything is possible. You can do anything you want. You just have to work for it. So I took what my dad said to heart. I decided to set my dreams big and decided that I would strive to become an astronaut. The allure of doing research in outer space and piloting the world's most advanced spacecraft proved to be a powerful motivator. What began as a childhood dream would come to define me. One of the first major goals I set for myself was to work for NASA. When I was in my last two years of high school, I was finally eligible to apply for their internship programs. I spent countless hours working on those applications, making sure every little detail was absolutely perfect. But then, several months later, I received my first letter. Nervousness and excitement overwhelmed me, but I finally built up enough courage to open the letter. And when I did, I read that first sentence, and my heart sank. <laughs> I wasn't the one the student selected. But my dad's voice resonated in my head. You can do anything you want to. So I got the letter. I went to my room and I pinned it on my wall. Throughout the year, when I was too tired to study, too sleepy to finish homework, all I had to do was lift my head from off my desk and reread that letter. And as I read it over and over again, I found that I had been inspired by my own failure such that when the next year came around, I applied to two internship programs. <laughs> the first one I heard back from bore the same message. At the time, nothing hurt more than working as hard as I possibly could for an entire year to still be told I wasn't good enough. And then, on April 12, 2011, <laughs> I received an email from NASA. With little lingering hope, I opened the email, and the first word to jump out at me was, congratulations. <laughs> and along with the excitement came a sense of peace as I finally realized I was on my way. But nothing has stuck with me more from that fateful day than when I shared the news with my dad. His reaction, the quiver in his voice when he said, everything is possible, son. And that's when I saw it. All the sacrifices, all the hardships, all the hard work that he went through to make sure that I had these experiences this success was not mine alone. It was for my parents, who amongst being the hardest, most hardworking, smartest people I know, didn't get a chance to pursue higher education. For my siblings, who through their shared experiences helped guide me. For my first grade teacher, who saw something in me when no one else did and helped my parents move me to a better school. But most especially, it was for all those students in my community who didn't and may never have that chance. I began to carry their hopes on my shoulders. Then and now, I want to be living and breathing proof that if you work hard enough, anything is possible. I want to go to outer space where the burden on my shoulders can become weightless. As someone who has benefited greatly from the kindness of others, I hope to do the same. Los Angeles, my home, has the benefit of having a couple NASA centers nearby and several aerospace companies sprinkled throughout the city. <laughs> 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 
That being said, it has always been a mystery that despite this proximity, much of the youth have failed to find direction. But there is hope. I still remember an incident that occurred after my first couple weeks at NASA. I agreed to meet some friends at a local park after work. I was walking around enjoying the warm summer sun when a young boy around five or six years old approached me. He noticed that I happened to be wearing a NASA t-shirt that, that day and he said, do you really work for NASA? With a smile on my face, I said, yes, yes I do. And he just lit up. He ran back to his mom screaming, mom, 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 he works for NASA. And just, that just showed me how much my neighborhood thirsts for role models, for people who can point them in the right direction and inspire them. And through my experiences participating in outreach events, I've noticed that astronauts have an unparalleled potential for inspiring the younger generation of students. By becoming an astronaut, I like to think that I could be a source of students for kids from the neighborhoods like the ones I grew up in that they could emulate from. <laughs> I had my first taste of outreach and the effect that I can have on students during my time with a rocketry team in high school. It was an elementary school science fair. There I stood in the middle of a vast open field. The lingering gaze of thousands of anxious eyes rested on my cardboard creation as I began to count five, four, the sound of my voice was drowned out by the gleeful screams of captivated children as they finished three, two, one. <laughs> I've never seen kids more excited as they're round and round, screaming again, again, and since then, I've been hooked. I put together this high school team after reading about a nationwide rocketry competition. Getting started was no easy task. Living in the middle of Los Angeles provided a variety of obstacles for launching rockets. One such obstacle was finding appropriate places to launch, as you all can imagine. We often found ourselves driving very, very far distances to find suitable fields. During one of our launch campaigns, we had to drive so far south, we were stopped by the border patrol. <laughs> Twice. I still remember the very interesting exchange I shared with that officer. He looked inside the car, saw a bunch of teenagers, and proceeded to ask the usual questions. What is your citizenship status? Do you have any drugs or alcohol in the car? And the like. But then he asked us, do you have any explosives in the car? <laughs> now, keep in mind, we're on our way to launch rockets, so my friends and I, we shared worried glances. I, I finally, I looked back up at him, and I was like, yes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not what he was expecting to hear. <laughs> as soon as I said that, he placed his hand over his pistol, gave me a stern look, and he said, excuse me? <laughs> then I proceeded to explain we were on our way to launch rockets, and I don't know why that made him feel better. Looking back, I should have probably handled that a little bit differently, but hey, all's well that ends well. Since my time in high school, I have been fortunate enough to build on these experiences. During my first summer at NASA, I engineered a differential scanning calorimeter to calculate the specific heat of carbon fiber at cryogenic temperatures. Remember that rejection letter that was on my wall? Well, uh, there's a, an award for my summer work there, right now beside it. And this past summer, <laughs> this past summer, I worked in the Thrust Vector Control Laboratory as part of the Propulsion Academy. And currently, in addition to being a student at the University of Illinois, I am a co-op participant at Johnson Space Center, where I've been supporting Project Morpheus by implementing regenerative <gasps> rocket cooling. <laughs> My hope is that all this work and experience will lead me into outer space. But until that day comes, I plan on contributing to NASA as a propulsion engineer or to the advancement of aircraft and spacecraft as a test pilot. I know that none of what I have already achieved 
or hope to achieve would be possible had it not been for the mentors who have helped mold me. My siblings who paved the path and held my hand as we walked through it. My mom, who's always been my biggest fan and her support cannot be quantified. My dad, whose wisdom proved valuable in the toughest of situations. All of the teachers and college peer mentors who have done more for me than they will ever realize. And this week alone, the National Space Club, especially Melissa Fowler and Annette Summers, who have felt like second, mother, second and third mothers to me and have truly cared for me. I cannot thank them enough. And this speech cannot do their contributions justice. I would need a lifetime to thank them. Space inspired me, yes. But it has been people like you in the audience whose experience and wisdom, concern, and kindness you willingly shared with the child I was, the boy I became, and the young man I am now showed me how to channel inspiration into goals and action, and more importantly, to keep trying. It forced me to set my goals high and settle for nothing less. When you flood a child's mind with an idea with excitement, it perpetuates with time and grows stronger as they grow older. It is for this exact reason that I try to utilize space to inspire the next generation of engineers, explorers, scientists, anyone with a dream. My brother once told me that as you grow older, you become the people you used to look up to. Based on the astounding differences mentors have made in my life, I challenge all of you to do the same. The truth is, you probably won't even realize you're making a difference. But look at what an impact it's had on me. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Clearly, your passion is truly contagious. And not only have you given all of us hope for the future of our industry, you've rejuvenated our own commitments to this great endeavor.